Romans chapter 6, sa itong basahon, verse 3, pa sa 14, mga Ikson. So, para ma-remind ta, sa itong union ni Christ, sa iyang uh, uh, naubanta, sa iyang pagkamatay, paglubong, o pagkabanhaw, mga Ikson, as we uh, celebrate today uh, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, mga Ikson. This is God's word for us today. Uh, may the Lord add His blessing to His word. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? We were buried therefore with Him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we, we have been united with Him in a death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in a resurrection like His. We know that our old self was crucified with Him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But he life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments of unrighteousness but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. It's for the reading of the word of God. So ako nang iuluhan ang sermon today, mga Ikson, o newness of life in Christ. Now, we know ka ng newness of life. Uh, um, bunga na sa gibuhat ni Jesus sa ato. Ah. It is not us trying to reform, di ba, ang atong mga kinabuhi, mga Ikson, but it is only a result of what the Lord has done to us. Now, last Friday or last week, di ba, ang tibok uh, Christendom uh, nag-dumdum, uh, uh, nag-celebrate sa so, misag-unsang pamagi, mga Ikson, others nag-celebrate, nag-dumdum sa pamagi nga, not acceptable sa Ginoo ang uban blasphemy na ang uban is nahimo na nga uh, insulting God but na uban nga nagadumdum uh, mga igsoon og nagcelebrate sa gibuhat ni Jesus in a biblical way mga igsoon so last friday nato nga gidumdum gi commemorate nato ang death ni Christ and today as many called kaninga sunday as a resurrection sunday mga igsoon in fact every lord's day is a resurrection sunday Diba? Sa reform, we always remind ourselves that when we gather every Lord's Day, we remind uh, ourselves of the uh, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ nga nahimong uh, uh, nahimog yun nga ang iyang sacrifice sa cross through His resurrection was indeed uh, received sa gino, gidawat sa gino yung sacrifice and that's the reason why uh, every believer gathers every Lord's Day diyan, sa presence sa gino because of uh, God uh, accepting Christ's sacrifice and raising Him from the dead, mga Ikson. Now, it is good to call to remembrance what the Lord has done for us, especially His work of redemption accomplished in the death and in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dagan kayo mag-celebrate, nga wakay nila masabdigyod kung unsa ang gibuhat ni Jesus. Si Asap, sa Yahang Asam 77, verse 1 to 11, naging siya, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on uh, your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God. Verse 14, yun siya, You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. With you, your arm, yun siya, are redeemed. Uh, with you, your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Now, we know that God created all things, na makangata, sa gibuhat, sa gino, sa creation, but the mightiest work of God is His work of redemption sa iyahang katawan. Saving sinners, mga Ikson, which is accomplished sa death and resurrection ni Christ. 
namay pinaka great mighty ang work sa ang work sa Ginoo is kaning pagluwas sa mga sinners. Di ba? We who understand how the Lord uh, saved us manganga ta, di ba ningon si Paul wa ni sukad mo sangtop sa una sa una sa tao ang wisdom ba ang pamaagi sa Ginoo na how he will save sinners through his son Jesus Christ. Manganga ta nga ato ning sabton nga sa inani nga pamaagi uh, giluwas na sa Ginoo. That's why importante kayo nga ato ning sabton because the problem with many Christians or who claim to be Christians uh, and in fact yearly gaga commemorate sila gaga celebrate sila sa death of resurrection ni Christ to the point na ilang i-reenact ang gibuhat ni Jesus to the extent of insulting God mga igsoon is na himo nga wa sila ka ilagyud wa sila wa nila masabti og ayo ang significance aning gibuhat ni Jesus sa ilang kinabuhi that ang significance ni that there is supposed to be newness of life to those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ Kasi importante ni nga itong masabtan mga ison. Si Paul in his letters to the Colossians, whom he did not meet but just came to know mga ison pinaagi sa ilang uh, uh, faithful nga, nga, nga fellow, nga uh, minister nga sa Eprapas, nagampo si Pablo nga to kanila, asking God that they may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In fact, si Peter mo po ng yung encouragement sa yung recipient, sa yung letter mga ison that all Christians must grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya aron kita, gawas ka makakinabuhi ta mga ison sa manner nga worthy, pleasing at ubangan sa Dios, understanding His plans at ito ah, and who we are in Christ Jesus para sad sa mga pagdaig na to sa ginoo, madaig na to ang ginoo with understanding, with words nga dili empty ba. What about it, Joel Biki, sa yung comments sa Revelation, nagsulat siya, ninyo siya, if you think that in heaven, you will be shouting, Alleluia, praise the Lord, all the time, you are mistaken. Kung ayaw mo pagdaig sa ginoo, praise the Lord, Alleluia na lang, matod pa niya, nasayop ka niya na, repeating cliches in, it's not praise, matod pa niya, we must use our minds in worshiping God. We should say, we thank thee because, because mo ni imong gibuhat, with understanding, we praise God. Matod ba ni Joel Biki? Ningon siya, We thank thee because we praise him not just to ventilate nice feelings bubbling up inside us, but because God has done wondrous things for us and he is faithful and true to his promises. That is why we praise him and give him thanks with understanding. His point din ni mga ison is we must know that uh, unsa gibuhat sa Ginoo sa ato especially in Christ that we may praise him and we may thank the Lord not with empty words not with bubbling di ba repeated nga mga words uh, mga ison do may man ang praise the Lord and hallelujah but dapat ang imong praise the Lord and hallelujah na sayod ka why you praise the Lord why you express that worship and praise sa Ginoo in a highest form mga ison it's because you understand very well the mighty works that God has done for us importante na siya Kayo sa ngatanan. Now, here in our text, let us remind mga ison ourselves of the significance of Christ's death and resurrection to the, us who believe in Him, to us who are united to Christ, mga ison. Here, Paul showed us, mga ison, that believers are dead to sin and alive to God because they are united to Christ's death and resurrection. And brothers and sisters, because we who are in Christ are united with Christ in His death and resurrection, therefore we must also consider that is count ourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is newness of life. Newness of life is being uh, understanding that we are now united to Christ and you ought to live your life to God as Christ Jesus live his life now to God, mga Ikson. Verse 10, for the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. That's inana unta, ya punta. That's why si false of verse 11, so you also must consider and count yourselves dead uh, to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Newness of life is in fact the only evidence that you truly uh, belong to Christ and are united to Christ in faith, mga isun. He is the vine, we are the branches. As we are united to Christ, there is supposedly newness of life to us who profess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, newness of life is because of what Christ has done for us. Dili ni sa atong pagpaningkamot, but because we are united to Him, 
there must be newness of life. Thus, here we see, mga ison, that the imperatives as, as to live, as we owe to live lives worthy before the Lord, mga ison, are just results of the indicatives that is what Christ has done for us. So let us consider two things in relation to our union with Christ in His death and resurrection. First, brothers and sisters, believers died with Christ in His death, thus they died to sin. We who believe in Christ died with Christ when Jesus Christ died on the cross. Thus, we died to sin. Verse 3, Do you not know that all of us, that is all who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, without exception, all of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ have been baptized into Christ Jesus. Uh, so we're baptized into His death. All of us. This rhetorical question ni Paul employed mga isun is to simply remind them of what they already know and who they are in Christ as they already know. All of us know. Uh, all believers know. You know, si Paul Do you not know? It's just reminding. Dili ni pasabot nga wa sila kabalo because walay Tao nga nituo ni Ginoong Kristo nga naluwas nga wa na sayo dugon sa ang iyang union ni Christ mga igsoon. And so, the word baptize here do not mean water baptism, although nag-signify ang water baptism nato sa tung union ni Christ because na may mga tao nga uh, nituo kang Christ nga wala pa mabautismo eh. And yet, the moment they believe, they united to Christ. The moment we believe in Christ, we are right then and there united to Christ. So, na mga tao nga nituo, and yet, uh, mga pila pa kaadlaw ni follow ang ilang baptism, mga ikson. Huwag na po yung mga tao nga nabautismohan nga sa tinuod wa gud ni belong ni Christ. So, si Paul din eh, sa iyang pagsulti sa baptize is simply uh, saying that those who are united to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, baptism here is used by Paul metaphorically. It describes our union and identification with Christ Jesus. As klaro ni Paul sa verse 5, For all we, for if we have been united with Him in, his, in a death like His, and we shall certainly be united with Him, in a resurrection like His. So, baptism here, nagpasabot na na as united, identified with Christ. Sama as the Israelites were baptized into Moses. Di ba? And then, uh, ng question ni Paul, are you baptized in the name of Paul and in the name of uh, Paulos? Di ba? So, baptism here, or being baptized here into Christ is being united to the Lord Jesus Christ in His death, my son. So, what significant thing happened to us in our union with Christ in His death? He expounded ni Paul, mga son, sa verse 6 and 7, where he tells us, We know that our old self was crucified with Him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. The old self there is our flesh, our sinful human nature, our unregenerate self, mga ison. So Paul here he speaks of putting, uh, putting off the old self and putting on the new self. So this old flesh here is in contrast ni sa new self na yung dimension dia sa, sa Colossians chapter 3 verse 9 and 10. So our self, our flesh, our sinful human nature. Ngayon siya dia sa Colossians 3, 9, yung giko, yung gi, uh, gi mention ng old self and new self. In siya, do not lie to one another seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. That's why we continue to grow and knowing Christ, mga isa, and being conformed, mga isa, to the image of Christ as we continue to learn His Word. That is a sanctification of process sa atong life. So this old self, this sinful nature, mga isa, in us, Paul says here in verse 6, was crucified, that is, died with Christ as Christ was crucified did to the cross. When Christ was nailed on the cross, we who believe in Him were crucified with Him Therefore, died mga ison as Christ died. And as we know, si Christ was crucified for our sin. Di ba? And therefore, as Christ died for our sin, we died to sin. Sama sa yung gingon. So verse 2, ningon siya dia. Awal na itong i-appeal sa itong text karon. Ningon siya sa verse 2. How can we who died to sin still live in it? So we who are in Christ, united to His death, died with Him and therefore died to sin, mga ikson. Verse 6, We know that our old self was crucified with Him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. That is the body of sin. Pariyora na sa old self na to. That is the flesh. Paul uses this term to refer to our sinful propensities that are intertwined sa itong physical weakness and our kiniatong uh, flesh. 
that is to be brought to nothing, uh, that is be rendered powerless or inoperative. In fact, ang King James brought to nothing ilan ang translate as destroyed. You see, kani atong, 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 atong sinful nga nature that is brought to nothing, that is destroyed when we died uh, with Christ, mga ikson. So, and then verse 14, for, uh, lakbay ta sa verse 14, for sin will have no dominion over you. That's why si Paul ngayon sa verse 14, wala na dominion ang sin sa to because sin, this kaning gitawag na sinful nature nato has been destroyed mga ikson when we died in Christ. So, wala na dominion, meaning, dili na siya mo lord over, mo rule over sa toa ang sin. And so, ningon siya, again, balik to sa verse 6, for we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing that is destroyed so that we would no longer be enslaved. Dili na tamahin mong slave sa sin. Although, dini sa as we remain in a fallen place, na pa mag remaining corruption sa sin. Diba? Although na set free na ta, na new creatures na ta in Christ, but still, as we remain in this fallen place, na gyoy, uh, gitawag nga, uh, na pa remaining corruption sa sin, mga ison. So, although there is still remaining corruption of sin sa to, ah, but it has, but, but sin has no more power to, or hold us to make us obey sa mga, a sinful nga mga desire sa tong kaugalingon mga igsuon. So, do na pa remaining corruption but ang sin wala na sa dominion sa to. Unlike sa una mga unbelievers pata that ang di tagani kamatikod nga ang tanan natong gabuhaton is sin at ubangan sa Dios. But as now nga nanatakang Christ, sin has no longer dominion sa to ha? but so long as we remain in this fallen flesh, nagid nga sin mga igsuon. So mura na siya og kumbaga kung nakay agalon, kung empleyado ka sa usa ka agalon, dili ka Kabalibad, di ba? You are obliged to obey ang imong agalon, mga ison. So, kung sa iya ang ikuman sa imo ha. Kung sa iya ang imando. But uh, kung wala na ka sa trabaho, kung dili na siya imong agalon, uh, ba, wala na kay obligasyon nga mo-obey sa iya ha. Di ba? Wala na kay obligasyon mo-obey sa iya. But nagya po ang choice ni mo, whether mo obey ka sa iya ha, as kung nasa iya ang sa imo ha. Like for example, ang akong boss sa una, uh, tanan niyang imando sa ako, akong i-obey because under man ko sa iya, iya ha. But sa uh, wala na ko sa iya ha, uh, nagya po ibutang uh, ihangyo niya sa ako ah uh, pwede ko mo balibad pwede na ko dili but nay panahon nga mo sugot ko kay siyempre maginanglan siya sa ako lugar kong naipatabang sa opisina nga ipasabot ang bag-o lugar ng empleyado so pwede na ko na buhaton but truth is dili na ko obligado nga ako na siyang buhaton kaya dili naman ko under sa iya nga 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 pagbuot mga ison so inana gyapon mga ison sa kinabuhing kristohanon uh, the problem lang is dagan kristohanon nga mas mobey sila sa sin. That is, that is, sin is, in fact, no longer na ilang master. Ang atong master is si Christ na we're supposed to obey the Lord Jesus Christ. But sometimes, there are Christians that they, they still live in sin. They obey uh, the, 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 the sin, mga ikson, the remaining corruption sa ilang, as if mo na ilang master, which is supposed dili na na master na to. And sin has no hold sa to, uh, to make us obey sa ilang mga ang ngayong buhaton. So, pwede na tayo, in other words, mabalibad. Unlike sa mga unbelievers na nga, dili taka say no sa sin. So, we, as, as, as now believers, mga igsoon, as is, pwede na tayo say no to sin. Inana, dapat ang Kristohanon, mga igsoon. do ang rebelde, kung imo na siyang murag, bato pa ni Jerry Bridges, ang rebel manggod, kung imubalik na siya sa gobyerno, uh, Oh, or say, ma-overcome siya sa gobyerno ang rebelde, but yet, uh, or say, wala na siya power ba sa ilang rebellion nga di na sila ka-influence sa mga tao, but tungod kay rebelde na sila, uh, taliga, padayon niya po sila o rebel, bisag dili na nila ka-overcome ang gobyerno, and yet they still continue to rebel. So, muragya po na daw, ang sin ba sa ato ang kinabuhi? Although wala na siya dominion sa atong life, and yet sin continues to operate sa ato ang kaugalingon. So, it's just a matter of whom you obey, mga ison. So, kita, sabto na to that we are no longer under sin, but under Christ. So, si Christ nag-redeem sa ito from sin, and therefore, we must obey the Lord. We must live in holiness and righteousness. That is how we live to God, mga ison. Romans chapter 8, verse 10 to 11, ayun si Paul, but if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead, from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies, to the Spirit who dwells in you. So, kung kita-kita lang, dili na to na mahimo. But we know that we who believe in Christ are indwelt by the Spirit of God, that we may be able to live sa holiness and righteousness. As we remain aning a flesh, that's why si Paul sa Galatians, naging on siya, di ba? Walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, so that you will not gratify the desires of your sinful flesh. 
So we as Christians, we ought to live in the Spirit. In other words, in obedience to the Word of God that we may be able to live a life that is in a manner worthy before God. Tungkol lagi kay ang sin nga nasa to, ah, bisag wala na siya power kagahom sa to, but continues to 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 to, 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 uh, to work sa atong sulod ang iyang remaining uh, corruption, mga ikson. For one who has died, verse 7, has been set free from sin. In fact, sa King James, he render na niya ang freed from sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. That is, gipastens na dito sa gitawag o King James ka ng has set free from sin, mga isun. So, gipastens sa King James ang freed from sin because kitang tanan nga nakang Christ are already freed from sin, mga isun. So, ang Greek word sa freed ya is di kayo o, mga isun. Giyus, gigamit na sa New Testament 40 times. But gitranslate na na only once as freed ka ng freed. Kanang word nga free din na ang gigamit sa gitawag o King James and then kanang sa ESV gigamit nila set free. So, kanang nga word, 40 times na gigamit sa New Testament, bigit translate lang na once as freed. The primary meaning is 37 times gigamit in, sa, 43, sa 40 times, 37 times na gigamit as justified. Kanang, kanang word niya nga freed, gitranslate once only as freed, but ang meaning gita na primary meaning is justified, O 37 times, O righteous or declared righteous, gigamit na one time also. So the idea here is that those who are in Christ are declared righteous or innocent, and that is why they are set free from sin. So makita ni mong ang word gigamit niya is, uh, the word that is usually used or uh, 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 as, as justified na term mga isun. So therefore, the uh, reason why we are set free it is because we are justified. Because again, we died with Christ. Christ died sa atong sin. We died with Him. And then, and then, ang iyahang pagkamatayon is para to sa atong sin to satisfy God's divine, or divine justice. And therefore, those who died with Christ, ang ilang penalty sa ilang sin, ang demand sa justice sa ginuna satisfied. That is why we are set free from sin or freed from sin as again ang King James na naga uh, translate. So therefore, because we are justified, we are freed from sin. Mga iksoon. That's why ang, ang, ang Psalm 103 naging on as far as the east is from the west, so far does He remove our transgressions from us. And then sa Isaiah 43 verse 25, Ang ginu mismo naging on, I, I am He who blasts out your transgressions for my own sake and I will not remember your sin. Think of ang ginuo nga di kalimot and omniscient God nga di kalimot. He choose not to remember our sin. Because all our sins, all the demands of the justice, mga ikson, sa atong sin against us is, or were satisfied by the Lord Jesus Christ when He died on the cross. And therefore, we who died with Christ, mga ikson, uh, died also to sin. And therefore, nahimutang set free sa sin, mga ikson. Uh, Muni ang naitabo. And so, because we died with Christ, we died to sin. And because we died to sin, we are set free from sin. But again, as we remain in a flesh, nagya po'y uh, nagya po'y murag, mabuhat, gusto mabuhat sa sala. But because we're no longer under enslaved ana nga propensity, we can say no to sin, mga isa, and we can uh, now obey the Lord uh, because ang iyang spirit po'y naman po'y sa to. So in other words, makasay no to sa sin, and kay wala naman siya, di naman siya natong master si Christ naman. And therefore, we as God's people, as we are expected to, can be holy, righteous life, even if napataaning a fallen flesh. So first, believers died with Christ, mga ikson, in His death, and that's why we died to sin, mga ikson. So second, duwara ni Kabok, believers rose with Christ in His resurrection, thus live to God. So believers first died, and si Jesus na matay, and then namatay po tao baniya sa sin, and then as we are united to Christ, kita nga believers, uh, we also rose with Christ, sa diyang si Christ was resurrected, and therefore, we are now to live to God, mga isan. This is the newness of life. Verse 14, we were buried therefore with Him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life, mga isan. So, newness of life here means how we ought to live our life now that we are in Christ, mga isan. That is how we conduct our lives, how we live our lives nga, 
in in newness of life. So bago na ta, so namatay ta, uban kang Kristo, pagkabanhaw pud nato, nabanhaw pud ta sa pagkabag-o sa atong mga kinabuhi mga isang. In fact, ako nagigayon, this is the only evidence nga mabalaan mo that you're indeed united to Christ kaya na in newness of life mga isang. In fact, si Paul sa 2 Corinthians chapter 5.17 niyo siya, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. Sa Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, niyo si Paul, And to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on again the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So, ang Christian, magkinabuhi kit siya sa holiness and righteousness. Tungod kay namatay siya sa sala, uban kang Kristo, sa diyan namatay si Kristo, nabanhaw po siya uban kang Kristo, and to newness of life. That's why he described as new creation. Diha kang ginong Heso Kristo, mga Heso. That those who are in Christ are conformed to the image of Christ in knowledge and true holiness and righteousness. Gak mo ni ang Christian life. Minta to simplify Christian life is simply to be conformed to Christ as we live our lives unto glory, mga Heso. So we continue to learn and know the Word of God and apply the Word of God sa atong life. That is how we are conformed to the image and likeness of Christ. So walk in newness of life is simply to walk in sanctification until the end sa imong life, mga isang. So walay bagong kinabuhi, wala ginay uh, dili tinuod ang kinabuhi. Kung walay kabago sa itong kinabuhi ba, nga kita mismo nasayod. Mananin ko nga kita man ginay mismo ang nasayod kung kinsa ta kaniad to, kinsa ta karon. Kung na may tao nga masayod nga na in newness nga life sa imo because of your faith in Christ, ikaw na mismo. Ikaw mismo. And therefore, kung wala gid mabago imong kinabuhi, sukad ka ni Adto, nito ka ni Kristo, mga isang. This just simply means that you are not united to Christ. Because all who believe are united to Christ in His death and in His resurrection. Therefore, naagyo in newness of life ang mga tao nga mituo kang ginuong Heso Kristo. Imposible nga walay effect ang imong union ni Christ. In fact, sa akong ikayon, kaning newness of life is simply an effect lang ni sa buhat ni Christ ato. Sa itong union, diya kang ginoong Heso Kristo, mga Heso. In other words, our walking, that is our living, that is ang, ang, ang imperative of living and walking in newness of life, our responsibility, our duty, is just the effect of the newness of life that we have in Christ, mga Heso, which is the indicative, you see? This is what Christ has done. Money ang nahitabo sa mga believers. Mga Ison. They are now new in Christ. Mga Ison. So wala ta nagbago. Uh, it is not us, mga Ison, by our own na nag, nag, naningkamot na magbago. Although na ay atong gitawag na uh, responsibility to live in holiness and righteousness, to, to, to fight against kaning uh, ward within us, kaning atong flesh ba that is kanunay magigbisog sa ato. Uh, although naana siya mga Ikson, ang uh, Christian life is not just simply uh, maglingkod lang ka and then automatic mahimo na ni mo. So nagid na ipakigbisog to do what is right at umangan sa ginoo mga Ikson. But again, nabakita it is because of what Christ has done sa ato. Uh, matod pa ni, ni, ni Kevin Diang sa iyang uh, libro na gingon siya that the scripture is asking the believers to be who they are in Christ. Scripture, Matupanya, is asking the believers uh, to be who they are in Christ. Dili na siya nga ang, ang scripture ga, gatudlo sa ato. Ngamun itong baton, para nga mahimot ang mabilong kang Christ. Dili, ang scripture is just asking us to be who we are in Christ. To live in holiness and righteousness. Dili na to make ourselves holy, to make ourselves righteous, and, and to connect ourselves to Christ. Dili, it's just simply living who we are in Christ. We are united to Christ, raised with Christ in newness of life. Therefore, we ought to live righteous and holy lives, mga isan. So, nagya po ang pakigbisog ni Ana, mga isan. Si Joel Biki, yung si Michael Barrett, sa ilang libro, mga isan, a radical comprehensive, or radical comprehensive call to holiness. Tingon sila, This union with Christ that has secured our newness of life and immortality demands modification in our lives. Ato pa nila kaning atong union ni Christ or kaning atong union ni Christ nga nag-secure sa atong newness of life. Nag-demand ni siya sa gitawag og modification in our lives. In other words, we ought to live as we are united to Christ. Dingon siya, since we are new creatures in Christ, our life or rather our view of life must radically differ from the one we held when we were dead in sin. In other words, mo sab atong pagtanaw sa kinabuhi. We no longer live for ourselves. We no longer live in sin. 
we live to God as we now belong to Christ. So, gipakita niya nga, kaniya itong union ni Christ mo ni nag-secure sa itong newness of life. New atong life because we are we are united to Christ. So, dili na kay magbag-uta para makonekta ni Christ. Dili na konekta ni Christ para mabag-uta mga iso. And therefore, because we believe in Christ, ni si Paul, all of us, di ba? All of us, na nakang Christ are baptized into Christ, mga iso. So, therefore, we, we, we just ought to live uh, the life that we ought to because we now are united to Christ, mga Ikson. The verse 9 and 10, dayon, expound ni Paul ang effect sa atong union ni Christ in his resurrection. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. So, kita po nga na unite ni Christ, we died to sin, and therefore, sin has no dominion over us. Ayang gigin sa verse 14. And then verse 10, dayon yun siya, for death he died, he died to sin once for all, that is once for all who believe in him, and once for all the elect. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So likewise, ding on si Paul, that is so, that is likewise, you also must consider, you who believe in Christ must consider, must count yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So Paul is not saying in verse 11 that you accept God's evaluation sa imong sa, or he's just saying that you accept God's evaluation rather. He's just saying accept God's evaluation. You're new in Christ. And therefore you ought to, you ought to live as dead in sin and alive to God. Mga son. This is what you are now. This is what we are now, brothers and sisters. And this is why we must live according to this truth, mga Ikson. So we are to live in holiness and righteousness. Paul is showing us, mga Ikson, dini, actually, the dramatic reversal of man's situation that he described sa Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 3.20. Ang human beings were portrayed as being alive to sin and dead to God. You see, he described na ni Paul sa uh, early chapter sa Romans, mga Ikson. But here, mga Ikson, gipakita ni Paul ang reversal ani because of the work of Christ and because of the union of the believers in Christ. Yeah. Before we live to sin and dead to God, now we are alive to God and we live to God and we are dead to sin, mga Ikson. So nabalik, kita na to din eh, nga indeed ni Christ ang work of redeeming people from the sin from the bondage of sin, giridim ta ni Christ. So, na-reverse ang naitabo sa Garden of Eden, na-reverse ang naitabo sa atong previous nga life of being unbelievers, mga Ikson. So, we were uh, alive to sin, dead to God, but now we are dead to sin and alive to God, mga Ikson. Muna ninyo siya din na, dead to sin and we are now alive to God in Christ Jesus. And because we're dead uh, to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus, ang verse 12 da yun, imperative, ingon din let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passion, mga So The word reign dia is ang meaning ana is burag, simply, when we know reign is just, sim we, we think of king when we uh, uh, mention the word reign. So, sa Greek ana, ang meaning ana is to be king, to be governed or to rule or metaphorically to exercise the highest influence and control. So, meaning, ang, ang command din eh, now that we are in Christ, uh, nanata sa newness of life, dili na to i-allow ang sin nga mo, mahimong king again, mahimong master again, mahimong ruler again sa atong uh, kaugalingon mga ikson. Dili na to ihatag balik ang gitawag nga influence o control sa sin sa atong mga kaugalingon. Kaya dili naman talagi under sin. Meaning, you have now, again, control over sin. And like before, ang sin nag-control sa ato, and now we have control sa sin. We can say no to sin. That's why we can say no, o dili na to, pwede na na to, dili i-obey ang passion sa, di ba, sa sin. Because sin is no longer your king. Your king is Christ Jesus now, mga Ikson. So, di na na to, ihatag ang rain, ang pagbuot, ang pagdumala sa atong mga kinabuhi sa matag-adlaw, sa atong words, sa atong deeds, sa sin, mga Ikson. Because, again, sin has no more dominion sa ito. And then, verse 13 da yun, yun dia, do not present your members to sin as instrument or unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instrument for righteousness. If you read the whole chapter sa 6, mga Ikson, expound ni Paul ka ng living 
or of all the members of our body to use as instruments of righteousness now that we are in Christ Jesus. So dini uh, gi, 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 free naman ta sa sin, sa dominion sa sin. We are now in Christ and then we are now raised to a newness of life, mga ikson. So first, dinad nato i allow ang sin to reign sa tua. We must say no to sin and live in holiness and righteousness. And then sa verse 13, dili nato i present ang atong members sa sin. That is, the members is all the parts sa imong paglingon, sa imong lawas, your thoughts and including your uh, physical nga mga uh, parts sa imong lawas as instruments of unrighteousness but you must present yourself uh, to God as those who have been brought from death to life. So all the members, eh, we, we, we use it for righteousness, mga ikson. So the word present din eh, is, 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 is the same word na gigamit ni Paul, mga ikson, sa kitap o Romans chapter 12 to present your as uh, your bodies as a living sacrifice. That is the same word na yung gigamit. Sa Luke chapter 2, 22, gigamit mo din nga word uh, sa diyang si Jesus, gidala siya sa yahang mga ginikanan dito sa uh, sa templo to present him uh, to the Lord, mga igson. So, ang word din nga gitawag na present uh, carries the idea sa kanyang gitawag na, na volitional ba, willful. You present yourself, meaning it is you willfully present yourself dito na sa righteousness, dili na sa sin. Kaya lagi, ang sin is no longer your master. So do not willfully, in other words, uh, use your life, your thoughts, your mouth, your tanan, partisi mong lawas as instruments of unrighteousness. Di ba? At mga baba sa unag, gigamit na to sa pagpamakak. Di ba? Gigamit na to sa pagpangdaot. So karon dili na na ni mo pwede gamitin because you're no longer under sin but under Christ, mga iso. So therefore, ang present din eh is to willfully use every part sa imong life, sa imong being as instruments of unrighteousness because we're no longer slaves sa sin, we are now slaves of God, slaves of righteousness, mga ikso. So, present yourself to God as those who belong or have been brought to death from death to life and your members all your being to God as instruments of unrighteousness. So, believers arose with Christ in His resurrection, thus live to God in the newness of life. Now, brothers and sisters, because we are in Christ, are united to Christ, mga ikson, sa yahang death and resurrection, therefore, consider yourself, count yourself, mga ikson, from now on. Remind yourself that you are now dead to sin and alive to God. And therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ, live in newness of life, mga ikson. Always live in newness of life. Understand that newness of life is the sure sign that you are indeed in Christ. And this newness of life, that is an eternal significance in relation to new heaven and new earth, my son. That's why God is redeeming all things, including us. That's why ginabagota sa ginoo as God will create a new heaven and a new earth for those who are new in Christ, my son.